back to the beginning of Chetam with Aleph, okay, which is, of course, today's daf, to uh, clarify the fact that we've had a side discussion in terms of this issue of Beit Shammai, Beit Hillel, what happens when you have, uh, how can you follow the stringencies of two different uh, Chachamim, uh, particularly based on what was said. Gemara seems now to have finished, put that uh, discussion aside, okay? And uh, is coming back to our main topic, okay, of the question of the Mabui now entering, going from a Rishusarabim out into the back lot or backyard, okay, area. Uh, you can see a picture of it if you're using Art Scroll on 8A1, the right hand corner opposite the note number 10. Okay. Now, uh, the uh, Gemara would look, guess if we look at this just for a moment, the diagram, it seems, I'm going to say that it's a straight shot between the Rishusa Rabim where the Mavui starts straight through the back lot to the Rishu Sarabim at the end of the back lot, which would seem to imply that we said that might be an open Mavui, okay? And all it needs in this case would seem to be the Lechi that's on the front of the diagram. Okay. However, we're going to see that it's more complicated the, of course, than that, right? So the Gemara starts off Chetam with Aleph again on the top. The Ulamai Desali Gadatim Meikara. In terms of, given what we had said, if we put aside our thoughts, so to speak, originally what we originally thought, Bein She'ervu Bein Shelo Ervu Plige, namely, okay, that uh, where we said that one rationale was that to be able to uh, question of carrying in the Mavui as well as carrying in the Rechava, the back lot, did the two, I'll call it for the moment, the, the two neighborhoods, all right, did they make a joint Eruv or not? Gemara is going to want to continue and say maybe that it has something to do with the whole issue here. And we have to examine it both on regards to the situation of, as if they did at all together a joint Eruv, and then we have to examine it if they did not do a joint Eruv, okay? So we'll start off Be'ervu, assuming that they did a joint Eruv the people who lived in the back lot, as well as the people who lived off the Mavui, the Mai Plige, what are we arguing about? Bishalo Evu, and if we say that they did not do a joint Eru, the Mai Plige, what are they arguing about? Asks the Gemara. Bishalo Evu, and notice here just the, the structure is what we call chiastic. A, B, B, A. In other words, they ask the question first with Eruv, then the question without. So now they're going to explore that second question first. Bishelo Eruv, when they did not do a joint Eruv, Pligi, what are they arguing about? Benir Emi Bachutz, Vishavem Mi Bifni. Now, it took me at least a while to try to understand that what, what they're talking about is that when you're standing on the Rishus Harabim, you're going to be able to see the Lechi. Okay? That's near Emi Bachutz. Okay? But Shavemi Bifnim means that if you're standing in the Mabui, the Lechi seems flush against the wall of the Mabui. Okay, and therefore it is difficult to be seen. It's difficult to be uh, clarified. That's problematic 
particularly if we say that the purpose of the lechi is supposed to be a hekera, okay, a, a visible symbol by which you say that it tells you that there's a difference in Rishiyos, okay? So that could be one possibility, okay? Now, coming back then, okay, so some want to translate that as it appears closed from the outside, okay? But I, I think appearing flesh, flush to the wall, to the inside, might be a little better way of clarifying it, okay? Be'irvo, and if we say that people who lived in the Rechava, the back lot, backyard, okay, and those who lived in the Mabui did do a joint Eruv, Kimiflike, Vidarav Yosef, then they seem to be arguing based on the view of Rav Yosef, right? Namely, the Amar Rav Yosef lo shanu ele shekala la emtsarechava, where Rav Yosef said that that only occurs. In other words, that we explained that uh, we didn't need any additional uh, accommodations to the second side of the of the rechava entering the Rishus Arabim only where it was a situation where the, it, it was such that the uh, direction of the Mavui finished up in the middle of the back lot, okay? Aval kala rechava, but if it came to a conclusion, the Mavui and where it entered the rechava, the backyard of the back lot, on one of the sides, okay, Asur. Then Rav Yosef says, it's forbidden to carry for the people in the Mavui, <coughs> people in the back lot into Mavui, okay? So what happens here, All right? All right, without any further adjustment. In other words, you need to put something on the, what I'll call, back lot end, okay, before going into the Rishu Sarabi. Amar Rava. So says Rava now, okay, in regards to this uh, situation. Ha, the Amar la emtsa rechava mutar. Okay, where are you saying, says that, uh, when it goes into the middle of the back lot. And if you look on A, A2, okay, in the bottom of the page, diagram A, okay, you'll see the example of it going into the middle of the back lot, okay? All right? So that would be the case, All right? Mutar that it's permitted, lo amran ela zeh shalo kineged zeh. Rab is saying that's when the situation is such as that diagram shows that the section from Mavui into back lot is not exactly opposite the, I'll call it uh, breach or, or opening in the back wall of the back lot into the Rishus Rabbi. okay? Aval zeh keneged zeh, but if it was exactly opposite, okay, then asur, according to Rava. That would be prohibited for them to carry unless they did a further adjustment to that opening in the back wall of the backyard going onto a Rishu Sarabi. Okay? Now, we further have another qualification. Amar Rav Masharshia, had the Amart, where you say, Ze Shalo Keneged Ze Mutar, that where you said, the Rav said, if, it, if it's not directly opposite, it's permitted. 
in other words, to carry in both. Lo amran ela richava de rabin. That depends if it's a backyard or back lot, which is inhabited with, uh, that's jointly owned by a number of people. Okay. Ava richava de yachid, but where that entire back lot may be the property of a single individual. Zimnin demim lichala. Perhaps there are times that he will reconsider it. Ubane labatim. And he will build other residences there. Vahave le kimabui shekalala litsi de rechava. And the result will be that it will be a uh, alleyway that comes to a conclusion on the side of the back lot, okay? Which would be like our ex the example that they show in diagram B there on the bottom of 8A2 underneath uh, note 13, okay? Va'asur, and then it would be forbidden. Umina temra, and how do, on what basis he says, do I say this, right? Okay, going on to our next Amun, right? Right, what happens? Umina temra deshane lan bein rechavad rabim rechavad yachid. On what basis do I say that there's a difference whether the back lot is owned by many, I'll say, or owned by a single person. The Amar Ravin Bar Rav Ada, as said by Ravin Bar Rav Ada, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, in the name of Rabbi Yitzchak, write the following. Shetz, right, namely, Maaseh B'mabui Echad, Shetzido Echad Kala Liyam, Okay, we have an incident <coughs> where we have an alleyway, okay, where one of the walls, okay, of the uh, alleyway, okay, finish up uh, uh, go, uh, towards a, a uh, wall that bordered the sea. V'tzido echad, and one of its walls, kalala ashpa and one of its walls finished up bordering a trash keep. Okay, so on 8A3, note 17 or 18 or 19 for that matter, you can see the example that the art scroll is trying to draw there. Okay, right? So what happens, right? Obama aselif ne Rebbe, and this incident came before Rebbe. Velo Amar ba velo hayater velo isu, and Rebbe did not issue a decree <coughs> whether it was permitted to carry in that mabui or not permitted. Isur lo Amar ba, he did not state it was prohibited. Because indeed, this Mabui had seemed to have valid partitions. Okay? Namely, you had a pile of trash, okay, that sort of formed a wall on one side. And then you had on the other side uh, a, uh, let's call it a beach, right? that sort of formed a wall on another side, okay? And going on now, right? Right, so therefore, Heter lo Amar ba, he did not give a statement of permission of carrying, why? Chayshinen shema tinatel ashba. Why? Because they were concerned lest somebody move this pile of trash, and therefore you wouldn't have two, so to speak, walls or partitions on either side <coughs> of the maboy. Vaya'aleh hayam sarton. Or, I'm going to say, 
that uh, as a result on the seaside, the beach would bring up more sand and it would change the, or take away sand, okay? And therefore the end result would be a destruction of the wall on that side. Okay, so the Gemara continues. Do we really need to be concerned that somebody might uh, remove the trash heap? But isn't it taught elsewhere? Okay, in a brighta. Ashpa, the Rashuta Rabim, Gavoa Asrat Fahim. Okay, that if we have a trash pile, okay, that belong is in the public domain and its height is uh, at least 10 Fahim high, right? What happens? Chalon Sha'al Gaba, if somebody has a window, so to speak, overlooking the, the uh, ash, the trash pile, right? Zorkin Labishabat, that one can throw out trash from his domicile through the window on Shabbat onto the trash pile, okay? And so they wouldn't be over, okay, on going from one Rishus to another. Alma, Shani ben Ashba the Rabim, la Ashba the Yachid. Therefore, it seems that there's a difference between whether it is a public trash pile versus a private trash pile. Okay? Hacha, Nami, Shani ben Rechavad Rabim, the Rechavad Yachid. So here too, it says, there could be a difference between the back lot, the backyard belonging to many versus it belonging to a single individual. The Rabbanan Mai asks the Gemara. So what about the view of the rabbis? Okay. Right? What did the rabbi say, particularly in regards to this incident of, uh, that was just raised with Rebbe, right? Amar Rav Yosef Bar Abdimi, he says as follows, Tana, he says, namely, he says it was taught in the following, the Chachamim Osrim, that the sages forbade carrying in that particular Mabui, like we see in the, as I said, in uh, this diagram opposite uh, note 19. Amar Rav Nachman, halacha kedivrei chachamein. And Rav Nachman then supported this view and said the decision is according to the sages and not according to Rebbe. Now, Gemara wants to tell us as follows that there's an alternative uh, description of this, let's say, phenomenon. Okay. de Amri. And there are those who recount it in the following manner. Amar Rav Yosef Bar Avdimi. Rav Yosef Bar Avdimi says Tana. It was taught in the Brayta. The Chachamim Matirim. Namely that the sages permitted the carrying Okay, in this Mabui. Okay, and apparently weren't concerned with Rebbe's chashash, uh, okay, that one side or the other might uh, disappear. Right? Amar Rav Nachman, ein halacha kedivrei chachamim. And the sages, Rav Nachman said, the law is not like the sages that said it was forbidden. Right? And what happened? Okay. The Gemara now tells us the following. Meri mar pasikla lasura ba'ozle. Okay. And now, he tells us another incident. Okay. That Meri mar once separated a mabui in sura, okay, that was along the side of the sea, 
by using nets. Okay. Amar Chayshinen Shema Ya'aleh Hayam Sartom. Why? Because he said, we're concerned lest the sea either add more sand or take away sand. Okay. Now, the Gemara picks up as we can. What would be the problem of adding? What would be the problem of adding it's more? It's going to change the question of the of whether that's still a valid partition. Uh. Right? Right? So the Gemara now tells us in that situation, okay, we're going to now raise another point, another concern. Hahumabui akum tahava basura. That particular, okay, another situation. Since we mentioned Mary Mar's act in a regards to a Madbui in Surah, we're now going to give another instance of a, of a Madbui in Surah, okay, where we see that there was the following scenario, okay, and I would suggest that the best uh, uh, example for the moment will be to look at the diagram on 8A4 opposite note 26, okay? That we see we have a mabui that is L-shaped. That's the akum, a curved mabui, okay? And this diagram shows that at one end by the Rishus Harabim, okay, you have a lehi, and where the curve occurs, we have what we're going to call a rolled mat. Okay? So now coming back into the Gemara, right? Hahu maboi akum dahava basura. There was a particular curved uh, uh, alleyway that existed in Sura. And what did they do? Karuch bude, okay? They rolled up a mat. Otivu be ba'ak momite. And they put the mat, placed it in the corner of the curve, okay, of the maboi. Amar Rav Chista, okay, says Rav Chista, ha lo karav, velo kishmuel. He says that's neither according to the role, the, the, the uh, decision, the psak of Rav, nor is it according to the psak of Shmuel. Le Rav de Amar Torato Kimifulash, according to Rav, who said that that kind of curved alleyway, okay, is open, Tsurat HaPetach Bay. It needs a Tsuras HaPesach, at least at one end. Le Shmuel, according to Shmuel, de Amar Torato Kisatum, who says that kind of curved alleyway should be considered a closed alleyway, okay? And therefore, okay, it would need a, a, a uh, lechi or a kora, okay, at both ends. Why? Hani mili, lechi malia. In this case, we can say here that the lechi is significant. It's beneficial. Aval hai, kevan de nashiv be zika. But in this particular case, if a strong wind is going to blow on it, vishade la velo klum hu. It's going to blow the mat away, okay? And therefore there'll be nothing there. Okay? And so the Gemara continues, veina eats be zika. And if we were to, uh, let's say, hammer or stick some sort of peg into the mat and then attach that into that wall, okay, chavre, and we would uh, sort of peg it into the wall and attach it, chavre, then it would be attached. Okay? And then that would seem to be appropriate. Okay, Gemara now wants to come back 
and deal again with what was said earlier. Gufa. Let's come back to the matter itself, okay, that we cited earlier. Amar Rav Yirmiya Bar Abba Amar Rav. Rav Yirmiya Bar Abba, in the name of Rav, said, Mabui Shenifratz Bimlo O Lechatzer. Okay, now we're talking about where the wall of the uh, alleyway was breached along its entire side. Okay completely into the courtyard. So we're talking now about a possible diagram on 8A4 opposite note number 30, okay? Where we see that the entire side is open, is breached, okay? Right? V'nifritza chatzar k'negdo. Okay, Chatzar Muteret. Okay, and opposite that, right, the courtyard is open. Carrying in the courtyard would be permitted, but carrying in a Mabui would not be. Asur. Amale Rava Bar Ula, the Rabbi Bar Abai. Rebbe, he says, Lo Mishnatenu Huizo. Isn't this scenario, okay, of the, of the uh, going into a smaller chatzer, isn't this similar to what we could compare it to what we had just before, namely that of the curved alleyway? Chatzar katana shenifritza gadola, a smaller courtyard, that has been breached into a larger courtyard. asura. That in the larger courtyard, it's permitted to carry in, and in the smaller courtyard, it's forbidden. Because it's considered like an opening into the larger courtyard and we don't have any attachments to it, okay? Amarle, he said to him, Ime hatam hava amina, if that was the case, he said, I would say as follows, ha, again, an answer, hani mili hechadalo kadarse barabi. That's only a situation where a lot of people don't a lot of public don't travel back and forth through it. Okay. But where there is a lot of traffic, public going back and forth, then I would say in that case, there in the courtyard also. Okay, what happens? <laughs> Right, where that's the case, where there are a lot of people, okay, what do we see? Okay, that in that situation, okay, that it would be enclosed and they could carry. Okay, so what happens? All right, Baha Nami Tnina, he says. And here the Gemara also then says, didn't we learn the following? If we have a courtyard where a lot of the public enters from one and exits from the other side, okay? In that situation, for issues of tumor, we consider it a public area, and therefore we will be lenient and say a person does not become Tame in that situation if there's a suffix. But in terms of Shabbat, we consider it a Rishu Sayachid. So the Gemara continues. Ime hatam, hava amina, if that's the case, okay? All right, if that's there, Okay, without the ruling of Rav, I would say the following. Hanimili 
ze shalo keneged ze. That's a situation where they're not op directly opposite one to another. Okay, let's go over. I know we got a lot of Gemara here. Okay, aval ze keneged ze, but where one is opposite, directly opposite one or the other, a malo. I would say that carrying is not the case, is not permitted. Ula Rabba, but according to Rabba, the Amar Ze Keneged Ze Asur, who specifically says that when the uh, Mabui entrance and path is directly opposite, right, the other, he says it's forbidden. Ha the Rav. What about the interpretation of Rav? Bamai Mokela. On what basis do we understand it? In a situation, again, where one is not opposite, one opening is not opposite the other. So Gemara asks at this point, Tarte Lamali, why do we need to both rulings? Ime hatam, hav amina hani mili lizrok, says the Gemara. It's possible, okay, that if I only had the one, okay, right, the, uh, ruling, that I would have thought only in a question of throwing would a person be considered chayav. Aval tail tale, alone. Okay, but in terms of carrying, I would say no. Hamashmalan <coughs> comes to teach us that that's not the case. That a person would therefore be uh, over in uh, both cases. Okay, we're now going to get to another example, a whole other case. Okay, um, as as I was looking at some of these gemaras. I'm thinking it's a shame that somebody, I was hoping, could find a book where somebody wrote about public works or the, the structure of uh, buildings in ancient Babylonia, okay? <laughs> We've, first we saw uh, a, an example of a alleyway, okay? That was a normal alleyway. Now we've seen an example, secondly, of an alleyway that's a curved alleyway, L-shaped. Okay. We just saw a third example where we have an alleyway that leads into a back lot. And then the other side of the back lot leads to a Rishusharab. Now the Gemara is gonna give us still another example of a different kind of alleyway. Right? And that alleyway is uh, basically, I'm going to say, look at, if you want, you can look at the picture in, uh, in the corner of 8B1, okay, near where Tosafot is. And we're going to call that a large alleyway with branches coming off it, okay? And each of those branches lead to a different Rishus Harabi. Wow. Okay. Now, the Gemara is going to call this kind of an alleyway a centipede. Okay. Because the centipede has a long body and it has the legs <laughs> branching off it. Okay. So we're now going to deal with this kind of uh, alleyway, right? Itmar. It was said as follows. Okay. Mabui ha'asui kinadal. Okay. If we have an alleyway that is structured like a centipede. Okay. In other words, it's shaped. Okay. So you've got a main alleyway and small alleyways branching off it. Okay. And remember, each of those small alleyways leads to a Rishus Harabi. Okay. So our question is going to be, what do I have to do to accommodate the issue of carrying 
going from the main alleyway into each and any one of the branches. Do I need to put something there or don't I need something there? Even if I already have, let's say, a Korah or a Lehi at the other end where the small branch enters into the Rishus Rabin. Amar Abai says Abai, Oset Surat HaPetach Lagado. Okay, according to Abai, his suggestion is what do we do? Okay, we put a Tsuras HaPesach, okay, into uh, at the entrance from the large Mabui into the, each of the small ones, right? That's what he's saying, Legado. Vihinach kulhu mishishturu belechi vakora. Okay? And then these smaller branches, what we're calling them, it's sufficient then for each one of them at the other end where they exit into the Rishusharabim to put either a lechi or a kora. Amarle Rava. And Rava responds, of course, with what you can guess is going to be a challenge. Keman, Kishmoel. That seems to be according to the view of Shmuel. Okay? The Amar Torah to Kisatun, who says that that main alleyway with the little ones branching off is like a closed alleyway. Okay? Lama le tsurata petach. Right, why do you need then a tsurata petach? Va'od and furthermore. Ha, here in this case, ha'um abai akum, this could be considered still a curved L-shaped mabui uh, like we had before. Da'hava benahardeya, okay, v'chashulak b'dirav just as we saw with the example in the Hardea, and we might suspect that maybe they should instead follow the directions of Rav. Ela Amar Rava, but rather Rava says, Oset surata petach lekuhu, lahai gisa, veidach gisa, mishtaru velechi vekor. Okay, and so Rava therefore is saying, we make a tzura a pesach on one side, okay? Namely, let's assume again, it's going to be from the larger alleyway going into one Bridge. of the branches. And on the other side, we have to, it would be permitted with simply a lechi or a kora, okay? Would be suffice. Amar Rav Kahana Bar Tachlifa, okay? However, okay, and that would then follow the opinion of Ra. Okay. Gemara, however, is going to continue, all right, with another example. Okay. Amar Rav Kahana Bar Tachlifa. He says as follows, right? Mishme the Rav Kahana Bar Minyome, in the name of Rav Kahana Bar Minyome. Mishmeid the Rav Kahana Bar Malchai, in the name of Rav Kahana Bar Malkio. Mishmeid the Rav Kahana, Rabe the Rav, okay, in the name of Rav Kahana, who is the teacher of Rav, Va'amre La, and others say, Rav Kahana Bar Malchai, Hainu, Rav Kahana, Rabe the Rav. Ooh. And others say it was Rav Ma Kahana, the son of Malchayo, who was the Rav Kahana, who was the teacher of Rav. All of that, huh? Okay, now to get back to our case, right? Mabui Shetzido Echad Aruch. Shetzido Echad Katsar. Okay, we get now another example of a different case. Okay. We have a mabui, an alleyway 
where one of the walls is longer and the other wall is shorter. Okay. Um, if you look at, uh, okay, on 8B2, the diagram opposite note nine, diagram A, right? you see an example where one wall is shorter than the other. Okay. All right. What do you do? Okay. Maniach et hakora ba'al kason. His suggestion is that you put a Korah up on a diagonal, as we see, okay, in diagram B, right? That would be one option, okay? Why? Because the distance, right, is uh, there's a four armless difference in the length of the walls, which makes it a separate rishus. Arba amot, and you have these four cubits, a no maniach et akora, elika neged hakatser. If it's four amos or more, okay, which would render it a separate hakatser, a separate rishus, right? What do you do is you have to put the kora on the top of the short wall going across to the top of the long wall, as we see in diagram C, okay, on that page, which would mean that you could only use the Mabui up to, right, that edge, I'm going to call it the inner edge of the core of the beam, and you could not carry beyond, underneath, or beyond till the very edge of the long wall. Okay. Rabba Amma, okay, is now saying, Echad ze, the Echad ze, Eino mani echet akora, ele keneged hakatsar. Rabba is saying, now, in general, regardless, okay, whether it, in other words, forget about putting it at diagonal, Forget about the option of whether it's got four amos or not. You always have to put the Korah uh, on the top of the short, I'm going to call the short wall. Ve'ema ta'ama didi. And I'll tell you my reasoning. Ve'ema ta'ama didi. And I'll tell you their reasoning. Ema ta'ama didi. I'll tell you my reasoning. Why? Kora to Amamai, what's the reasoning, the purpose of a of the Kora of the of the beam? Mishum Hakeh. Okay, because of, of of it being a visual symbol, right? Uba'al Kason, Lohavi Hakeh. And on a diagonal, it would not necessarily become an easily visual symbol. Ve'ema ta'ama didho. And I'll tell you what their reasoning is. Kora mishumai, the cross beam, what is its purpose? Mishum mechitza, because there it's considered an actual start of a partition. Upa al kasom, nami havi mechitza. So the Gemara really reasonably asks, okay, but couldn't on a diagonal it also be considered? the beginning of a real partition. And now we can see a response. Amar Rav Kahana, says Rav Kahana, in this case, O'il v'shma'atata de Kahanehi, since we see that this lesson has been brought by a number of rabbis with the name Kahana, he says, Ema ba milta, and my name is Kahana, I'll say something also about it. He'll add his two cents, so to speak. Handa amart maniach hakora ba'al kasin. Since you're saying that you might be able to put the cross beam on a diagonal, lo amran ela she'ein ba'al kason yoter me'eser. 
that's a situation where we say that the, the di length of the diagonal, okay, is not more than 10 cubits. Aval yesh ba'al kasano, yoter But if the distance would be more than 10 cubits, divrei hakol, no maniach ela keneged hakatsar. Everybody would be in agreement that you can only put the, you, know, you must put the core in then on the short, short wall line. across. Okay? Ibai So now they ask as follows. Mahu lehishtamesh kachet hakora. So now we're getting, again, slightly different subject, but still dealing with the clarification of this cross beam. What about the area underneath the cross beam? Okay, can it be utilized or not? Can one carry underneath it or not? Okay, so we have to go on, right? Rav Rabbi Chia, the Rabbi Yochanan Amru Mutar Lehishtamesh Tachet Akora. So Rav and Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Yochanan all say it's permitted to utilize, I'm saying, the area under the cross me. Shmuel, the Rabbi Shimon bar Rebbe, the Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, amru asur lehishtamesh tachet akola. And you have three sages equally also saying, right? Shmuel and Rabbi Shimon, the son of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, and Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, all arguing that it's forbidden to use that uh, Rabbi, under. yes. Uh, is there a difference if you're walking from the Rosh Hashanah into this little complex or if you're walking outside? No, there would be no, certainly there would be a, the, the question I understood it, Ted, is your car, can you carry, it, you're in the Mabui and you're permitted to carry. Oh, okay. Where, where does your where does your limit end? Okay. You certainly see at the cross beam that tells you, beware, you're entering a different rishus. You can't carry there on Shabbat. Okay. All right. So what okay. happens? Lema bahakim ifligim. Shall we say this is what they're arguing about? Demar savar kore mishum heker. That one master, but in other words, three of them really, believe that the, the cross beam is a heker, umar savar kora meshum and the other three argue that it's because they see a cross beam as a actual beginning of a partition. No, no, he says, the kuli alma kora meshum heker. No, everybody agrees that the cross beam is considered a visible reminder. And here, this is what they're arguing about. And that one considers that it's a symbol, and this gets to the point, Ted, of your question. One considers it a sign from inside. Uh -huh. Okay? From those who are in the Mabui. And the other considers it it's a reminder from the outside. The Ibayat Emma. And if you want, I would say the following. Maybe the Kuli Alma Mishumachitza, that everybody says no, that that Korah is considered like a real partition. And this is what they're arguing. Demar Savar Chudo Hapnimi Yoreid Vesotem that one group holds that the outer edge, okay, well, in this case, the inner edge, okay, the, uh, I'll call it the Mabui side edge, comes down and it acts like a block. Umar Savar Chudo HaChitzon Yoreid. And the other group says, no, it's the Rishus Harabim side <laughs> edge of the Korah. Is, is that edge comes down and acts as a block. Right? Amar Rav Chista, says Rav Chista, 
Hakomodim Babain Lechayim Sha'asur. Rav Chista says, now everybody's in agreement that underneath <coughs> this, uh, okay, that now we're going to move the topic, okay? Before we were talking about under the Korah, right? Now we're saying instead, Labriot, instead of a Korah, let's say there's Lechis there, okay, right? So what about the area directly opposite the Lechi, okay? All right, what about that? Between the lechi and the other side of the wall of the, uh, of the mabui. Okay, what about that? It's forbidden to carry. Rami Barchama, And so Rami Barchama asks Rav Chista, Na'at Shteyetedot. Okay, it gets more complicated, guys. One takes two pegs and they pound the pegs into the wall. Okay? Na'at shte yeteidot v'shnei kotlei mabui mi bachutz. And they pounded these pegs, okay, into the wall of the alleyway on the outside. Okay? So v'hiniach kora al gabehim. And they put the crossbeam on the pegs. In other words, not on the top of the walls, okay, but on these pegs sticking out. Okay. Mahu, what's the status? Amarle, he says to him, here it gets complicated. The Devre Hamatir, according to the ones who said that, that it was permitted, Asur, now it's forbidden. The Devre Haoser, According to the ones who said it was forbidden, mutar, it's permitted to carry them. Rabba Amar, the divrei ha'aser, nami asur. According to Rabba, to the ones who said it was forbidden, it's also forbidden. Why is that the case? As we finish up on Chet Amud 8b4, right? Ba'in and Korah, al gav mabui, Veleka, that we need to have the crossbeam on top, okay, of the alleyway walls. And we don't have it in that case. Etive Rav Ada Bar Matana, Rav. And now a challenge is going to be raised, objected to Rav. Okay? Aita Korato Meshucha Otluya. And I'm going to save that for tomorrow because it gets more complicated. Just end at this point with saying we have one view that says that the Korah clearly has to be on top of the walls and the argument was whether you could use the space that's why I said use the image of a two by four as the Korah, okay? Whether you can carry underneath it or not, or another raising the question, what about if the Korah is not on top of the walls, but on pegs <coughs> sticking out from the end <coughs> of the uh, walls of the Mabui into the Rishu Sarabim. Okay. And we're going to stop right there, guys. Okay? I hope that I did a diff decent job trying to explain this stuff. All right? Asakoa, thank you very much. Uh, Have a great day. Okay, take care. Getting interesting. <laughs> as, a, as somebody who knows uh, buildings and engineering, Ted, you can appreciate it perhaps more than a, okay, thank you. Care. You can appreciate it, but then, you, but then you lose track of what you're trying to accomplish. <laughs> right, right, okay, take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.